What's up guys? Welcome back to Triple Double Nation. Today I'll cover 10 players who hate LeBron James. Let's get into the video. When it comes to LeBron James, mixed opinions will always be shared, whether it is coming from players, media members of fans, some may argue that he is the greatest basketball player of all time, while others will point out his finals records. Many will point out that James brings the best out of his teammates on the court and away from it, while a few may not the world of him as a leader. As far as James is concerned, he tends to be very popular with his teammates since he strongly values holding friendships with his peers. Through various events and get-togethers, James is always attempting to reunite his teammates, even when they aren't on the court. But much like every great player, James also happens to be a polarizing figure who made some enemies along the way, including teammates who weren't thrilled to share an experience with him. Chemistry issues tend to be the main reason as to why some ex-teammates have expressed bitter feelings towards their run as teammates with James. And that is understandable since James' unique style isn't going to appeal to all players, as they have to be willing to adjust to his reign on the team. From his early days as a Cleveland Cavalier to Miami Heat and now the Los Angeles Lakers, James has had plenty of memorable teammates, some of whom paired up with him numerous seasons while others only lasted a few months. Here are 10 NBA players who couldn't stand playing with LeBron James. Number 10, Isaiah Thomas. There were huge expectations on Isaiah Thomas to come in and immediately deliver for the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was the main returning piece in the Kyrie Irving exchange, so it is understandable as to why the team, as well as fans, were somewhat impatient with Thomas. He wasn't thrilled about being partially blamed for the Cavs' struggles as well as criticized for his lack of efficiency. An opportunity to play with LeBron James didn't turn out the way Thomas had hoped, as they didn't exactly gel on the court or even away from it, which is why Thomas didn't last half a season before getting traded. Number 9, Eddie House. For his last NBA season, Eddie House returned to the Miami Heat where it all started in 2000. It happened to be the beginning of the new era as the Big 3 emerged for the first time. Although the team fell short to the Dallas Mavericks in 6 games of the NBA Finals, House's stint with the team one month into the following season as he was waived. Since then, House has been critical of LeBron James many times, going as far as to call out his former teammate for his performance in the Finals, adding that he quit on the team. Number 8, Darius Miles. You may remember Darius Miles as the second overall pick of the 2000 NBA Draft and being one of the biggest busts of his era. Miles played for the Cleveland Cavaliers with a young LeBron James, and as the 2003 draft approached, Miles was asked about the possibility of playing with James. His response has now become famous for all the wrong reasons, as Miles doubted that a high schooler could add much to the team, while adding that he would welcome him to the Cavs bandwagon. Needless to say, they didn't get along as teammates, which was evident by James' social media caption years later directed at the infamous Miles quote. Number 7, Mario Chalmers. Mario Chalmers was often seen as the weak spot for the Miami Heat during the Big 3 era. He did have some impressive showings from time to time, but he was also prone to disappear and make mistakes on the court. That's why LeBron James was caught by camera going off on Chalmers a number of times as two got into from it throughout their run with Miami. Chalmers was simply not a fan of James' antics, especially since he believed himself to be a far greater than he actually was, claiming that he was a top 10 point guard in the league at some point. Number 6, Mo Williams. Considering that LeBron James was highly responsible for Mo Williams' one-time All-Star appearance in 2009, you would think that the latter would adore him. They definitely got along very well during their first stint together from 2008 to 2010, which is why he was brought back to the team when James returned in 2015. The duo did get to win a championship as teammates, although Williams' role was significantly reduced the other time around, but they had a falling out that affected their friendship away from the court as told by Williams himself, who didn't quite enjoy his second stint as James' teammate. Number 5, Anton Jameson. 
Around the trade deadline of 2010, it became apparent that the Cleveland Cavaliers were trying to lure another all-star player to their roster. With some deals falling through along the way, as well as uncertainty regarding LeBron James' free agent decision in the summer, the Cavs acquired Anton Jameson with hopes that he can be a double-double threat on any given night. Jameson wasn't bad by any means, but the Cavs needed out of him to keep James around beyond 2010. And given that Jameson's production took a hit next to LeBron, the former didn't greatly enjoy their half a season run as teammates. Number 4, Larry Hughes. For two and a half seasons, Larry Hughes got to play with LeBron James as a member of the Cleveland Cavaliers. The team had just started making the playoffs in the James era, and Hughes was expected to provide plenty of assistance in the postseason. That didn't come to fruition as Hughes' level significantly dropped off, which is why the Cavaliers traded him midseason in 2008. Since leaving the team, Hughes has thrown some shots towards his former teammate James. Based on some of his comments, it's safe to assume that Hughes wasn't a fan of James' playing style on the court. Number 3, Carlos Boozer. As the most high prospect of all time, there were huge expectations for LeBron James to come into the NBA and instantly perform from his rookie season. As the Cleveland Cavaliers were expected to draft him with the first pick, some interviews were held within the members of the team including Carlos Boozer. The latter voiced his thoughts that James may not make much impact on the Cavs, especially since they already had better players at his position. A quick look at the Cavs roster in 2002 and 3 will have you question Boozer's answer, so it's no wonder that he only has lasted another year with the team. Number 2, Ricky Davis. Ricky Davis believed that he would be the face of the franchise even when LeBron James arrived to Cleveland in 2003. He went as far as to claim that James was a good addition to the team since he could provide him with assistance. Needless to say, Davis only played 22 more games for the Cavs prior to his trade to the Boston Celtics. While he didn't clash with James behind the scenes, they simply had no chemistry on the court, which wasn't a surprise since Davis thought very highly of himself and perhaps underestimated LeBron James as a player. Number 1, Kyrie Irving. Despite winning a championship together, Kyrie Irving didn't have the greatest time next to LeBron James. He didn't enjoy taking a backseat to James at all times, as well as not receiving credit enough for his contributions to the team. Irving requested a trade from the Cavs since he wanted to run his own team as he didn't want to be seen as James' psychic anymore. Considering that James tends to dominate the ball on his teams, it's understandable that some fellow All-Stars may struggle to adjust, especially since some players want to be in the spotlight as much as possible. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future.